I am Chad Valella. I'm Tyler Gillette. I'm Matt bettinelli Alpin. I was the executive producer on Scream. I'm part of Radio Silence. I'm one of the directors. I'm the other director. We are co-directors. I just remember how much fun it was, like, seeing it the first time and being like, oh, that is the exact experience you want when you see a movie. It's fun, it's scary, it's moving, it's got everything. And then I think one of the other great things about the franchise as a whole is that you kept getting it for years, you know? It was like you got the second one a year later, and then a little longer you got the third one and the fourth one, and so to be a part of the fifth one is mind-boggling. One of the, the moments I will never forget during the shoot was when the Legacy cast walked onto our, our big sort of Act 3 set for the first time. And just watching them have the experience of stepping back in time to the first movie, um, you could see how much that family and these movies have, have meant to them. And I think there was just a real there was a real sense of responsibility on our part and, and honestly, just a very sort of humbled approach, wanting, knowing, knowing and really feeling like we were, we were the new kids <laughs> on the block. You know, we were stepping into something that, that really had roots and, um, and that it was our job to find a way to, to move it forward, but to also really be aware of and pay respect to what had come before. <laughs> it's the perfect blend of, of you know, a, a kind of a story that, that brings new characters into the mix while also touching on and paying respects to what came before. It's a baton pass, ultimately, kind of in its, in its, most, in its most simple of terms. It's, it's a baton pass from, from one generation and one legacy to the next. And I think also one of the things that Guy and Jamie did so well in putting it into the movie in such a concrete way is just like the first scream, and actually all, all the four screams, they illuminate something that's happening in movies and in culture at that time that you're not maybe aware of or you're aware of, but you don't have like a name for it, or you can't put your finger on it. And then what they did, it was the first time, I think, I know at least for me, that I read it and was like, oh, right, that's a trend that has been happening now that I, I never consciously thought of. And then once you shine a light on it, you see it everywhere. Dewey, at, at, in this movie, he's, um, he's grief-stricken, ultimately, um, because of the loss of his, of his sister and the loss of the love of his life, Gail, who has moved to New York to be the anchor of a, of a morning show, of a huge morning show. Dewey has stayed behind. Um, he's, he's, no longer, he's no longer the sheriff. And uh, he, I think, for the most part, is kind of in hiding. Um, and I think one of the, that, that was one of the important things that we really wanted to hit hard is that there's a character in the movie that is an expression of and, and is a way for us to deal with actual grief, right? To, 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 have, a, to have a conversation about loss and what that, what that does to the people who are left behind. And it felt like Dewey was kind of the perfect vehicle for those, for those ideas. Um, and as I said, Gail is, is in New York. She's, she's left Woodsboro. Um, for greener pastures, uh, we come to find out that her and Dewey have split up, that he was there for a few months, and that ultimately just couldn't hack it in the big city. He wasn't cut out for it, and so moved back home. And Sid, as you said, you know, very wisely has gotten out of Woodsboro, no desire to return. But of course, when the shit hits the fan, she feels called back to, uh, to face Ghostface one last time. David was incredible. He, he, because, you know, Dewey's down and out. He's living in a trailer and he's not doing that well. And he's kind of given up on life to some extent. And David was just able to embody that in such a real way without losing, like, the heart and the joy that is, I think, the reason we all love Dewey so much. He still brought that to the character. And because that could have been morose so quickly, where it was just kind of dull and dark. And David was able to make the character have all of that stuff happening beneath the surface without sacrificing who Dewey is. Courtney just has a, she has an energy. She brings an energy to her work that is, uh, it's super contagious. It's also just, Gail is such a fun character. When, when she's on screen, when you're on set shooting, shooting that character, there's just a sense of everything feels a little supercharged. Mm -hmm. And, and a lot of that is because Courtney is just so damn good at her job, and she's also just really, really fun to work with. 
Well, it's not Scream without Sidney Prescott, that's for sure. And we definitely wanted to approach it that way. And, and having Nev be a part of it was, was, was integral to our, our participation in it as well. I still remember our first Zoom with Nev, uh, and it, it, we were just point blank, like, listen, we can't do this movie without you. Like, this is not, this is not a... Yeah, it was like real talk. Yeah, it was like, it was like all the bullshit aside. You are the movie. Like this is it all. If if you're not a part of it, what what is Scream? You know, and and she was so kind and so giving and so sweet and just really let us like. She told she was she was she was a collaborator. I mean, she really like as soon as she got on board, she had really really great thoughts about how to shift the script so that it would really be, it would do Sydney justice. You know, because again, from us, from Guy and Jamie, we're all fans and we know it from the outside in. She knows it from the inside out. And to get that perspective was just invaluable. I think one of the things that's really fun about calling this one Scream is that there was a way for us to organically in the movie, because what the movie's about, because of fan culture, because of requels, to call it Scream and then shine a light on why it's called Scream within the movie so that the movie is making fun of itself for being called the same thing as the original. And that was really well stated. You, I'm surprised. Yeah, you that, nailed there it. There was that a lot was of really ways good. that I could have gotten tied in knots. <laughs> but like once that clicked for us, and we realized that it was it was organic and integral to the story we were telling, we got really excited about calling it Scream. I mean, it was always our aim to to create an ensemble that felt like a group of real of real kids. And I think we achieved that. And I, I think I think that that has a lot to do with with diversity, but it also just I think again has to do with. Um, with energy and and how those those actors that group relates relate to each other and and I think that you feel you feel the chemistry that we knew off screen with with all of them we think really exists in a in a really distilled and amazing way on screen going into any pro project you need to be prepared and on the same page so when you hit the ground you're able to to, to make sure that that vision is like executed. So I, I think we, we spend a lot of time in the script phase and just going over the script and making sure we know our ins and outs of scenes and what we want out of scenes and what we want out of production design and, and, and then performances as well. So when we hit the ground on set, we're able to be like, all right, cool, let's, let's figure out how, you know, where everything is right now, where it needs to be. And, and it also makes us a little bit more malleable, I guess, when something happens that we have to adapt on the spot. We have to change on the spot. We're like, all right, well, we, we're all on the same page already. So now we, we're able to like shift a little bit and, and get things done. One of the things we discussed a ton before and also with our DP, Brett, uh, was how do we make it feel aesthetically like it's of the screen world and also make it feel like it's up now? And like it's fresh and modern, and I think that was one of the big balancing acts with production design. Yeah, that was kind music, of the big with, challenge, I would yeah, say, right? It, kind it, of creatively. I think it's the biggest challenge is making it have that balance, so you don't feel like you're watching something that's totally divergent of what you know. What is it? The thing that we all love. I hope they get all the scares, all the fun that you you know that you're paying the ticket for, and I think I ho my hope at least is what they leave with is that they feel like they have a new cast that they like feel like they love yeah. and how, you know you, you and they want, want to, they want to, want to know more about they want more yeah. stories mm -hmm.